These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> Today's episode is a bonus remaster of an episode we first published all the way back in 2016. We've re-seasoned the meat, plucked out a couple of maggots here and there, and are serving up on a shiny and steamy and fetid platter with brand new narration. Why? Well, after writing and narrating her own Christmas Cracker Flash fiction episode a few months back, we fell in love with Shara's narration and wanted to give her a full episode. So, without further ado, Today's episode is Photoshop Wizard, written by Luke Condor and narrated by Shara Yonke. This is genius, the voice said, booming through the computer lab. Jeremy, you're some kind of Photoshop wizard. Walker winced with every word as if each one were a fork pressing into her ribs. Guys, the teacher, Mr. Dag, or as he'd prefer you call him, Dave, called to the class. He waved to them from their individual Mac workstations. You guys have got to see what Jeremy's working on. It was a small class of eight, all studying for their BTEC National Diplomas in Graphic Design at West Knotts College all trying to avoid getting a real job at McDonald's or Boots or Marks and Sparks, all wanting to escape this dying small town and wend their way to a big city to make their living doing something interesting, maybe even get a tattoo. But Walker wasn't into any of that. She simply enjoyed the manipulation of imagery. She would lose herself at her computer for hours at a time, headphones plugged into her ears playing the latest drone chord tracks, tapping and clicking on the keyboard as if she were born to do it. And it was in the Adobe Photoshop software she'd found her home, her calling. Dodge, burn, clone stamp, lasso, and the all-important pen tool. These were the spells in her book, the recipes for her alchemy. Command shift, command click, command X, then C, and then finally V. These were her incantations, the shortcuts that she called upon, like she was summoning demons and ghouls from the pits beyond. You see, Walker had moved well beyond the basics of image manipulation and was, although she'd never say it out loud, above this class. She'd even seen Mr. Dagg's, sorry, Dave's, design work for a banner campaign for a local brewery and thought it amateur and derivative. Anybody could find the outline of a beer bottle, find some stock imagery of a stag, add some serif text, and slap it on a label. Anybody. But Walker was about more than that. She was interested in how images could be morphed and changed as if she were changing reality itself. She enjoyed the 12-hour sessions painstakingly altering photos of people and animals and nature to create something new, something real. As if by removing the initial context of association and reducing elements to the abstract, she might be able to bring out raw emotions in her audience. Not audience, no. That didn't sound right. Witnesses, yes. That's it. Dave didn't see it that way. The last time she'd showed him some of her work, he called it garish and pompous. Dave didn't know. He didn't understand. He didn't know the pleasures of altering the reality before you. You see what Jeremy has done here. Dave continued now that the class had wheeled over and gathered around Jeremy's workstation. He's taken the initial brief, design a business card for a corner shop and has produced something completely fresh, completely original. Here, look. The class members peered over, fingers on their chins as if they were archaeologists inspecting a new find. And you, Walker, Dave said as he sat his fat, chinoed arse on the computer desk and placed his weirdly long fingers on Jeremy's shoulders. I think you, of all people, need to see just what Jeremy has produced here. I think you could learn a thing or two. Walker sighed, gritted her teeth, and looked at the image. 
For a second, she figured it might have been a joke, but when Louise, the olive-skinned one she kind of had a crush on, but hadn't quite admitted to, announced that she thought it was genius, Walker realized it was no joke at all. These fools were serious. The image itself was a square. A red square with a cartoon arrow pointing to the bottom right corner. Within the arrow was the legend, in a fancy pants serif font, the off-license. Incredible, right? Dave said again as he stood up. Clean, neat, and without random imperfections. Sure is original, said the spotty one in glasses whose name Walker could never remember. How did you come up with it? Well, Jeremy said, I mean, I just kind of thought of it. I guess you could say kind of, you know. Came to you? Walker said, predicting the predictability of Jeremy's sentence. Yeah, sure, that's it. He smiled that milk shop grin and seemed genuinely proud of what he'd done. Like I said, Dave continued, a real natural, a Photoshop wizard. Words escaped Walker's mouth before she knew what she was saying. It must have been something rotten, though, because silence took the room and the class looked at her. And the words came again. You've got to be fucking kidding me, she said louder this time. Here we go again, said Glasses, turning away. No, Walker said, standing, feeling her head grow warm and her fingers shake. This is fucking basic bullshit, and you're all gobbling it up like piglets at Mr. Dag's teats. Please, the teacher said. Call me Dave. He stood up his distended belly almost pressing through his pre-marked vest top and into Jeremy's cheek. And if you have a critique, Walker, then I think you should keep it to yourself, because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, class, but we're all tired of your... your... your foo-foo. Suddenly, Walker didn't feel right. She pressed her fingers to her face and felt her gorge rising, readying to pop. Heat seemed to fizzle in her brain as if there were pockets of air trapped in there. Soon enough, the class began to spin. Their faces stretched and glistened like paint running in heat lamps, their eyes turning to long streams of white and black. The paint began to spin as if a plug had been pulled, and they were all being sucked into a whirlpool and down the drain. Walker's skull felt heavy on one side, as if several unseen hands were pulling her downwards yanking her by some invisible string, pulling her head to the desktop. Eventually, her cheek found the cool of the desk and she opened her eyes and everything appeared to be normal. The class were looking at her like she was something repulsive. Crazy. Insane. She stood up straight, holding her head. Are you okay? Dave said softly. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just have to go to the bathroom. Please. Are you sure? He said, genuine concern in his voice. Want me to call the nurse? No, Walker said, as she turned for the door. Please, I'm fine. I just need a moment, please. She ran to the door and stepped out, hearing as two of the students laughed. <laughs> Time of the month, one of them said. Oi, that's rude, said Louise. I think she probably just caught sight of her own artwork, if you could even call it art. Walker left them to their cackling as she walked through the corridor, holding on to the wall and finding her way to the girl's bathroom. She thanked the devil that it was empty and made her way to the first cubicle. She sat for a while, leaned over with her head in her hands, her breath easing. After a while, the urge to vomit withdrew, and the heat in her cheeks cooled, but the fizzling in her head just beneath her scalp continued. It wasn't as invasive as before, but it was still there, as if something was still changing in her brain, rearranging. Some unknown time later, the bathroom door opened. She listened as the unseen girl walked in, peed, and then washed her hands. The girl hummed and Walker recognized the voice. She lifted her head and pushed the cubicle door open. Hello, Louise, she said, her voice raspy and dry. Walker, Louise jumped and turned around. She had her pocket foundation in her hand, readying to dab it once more on her olive cheeks. She put it down next to the sink, 
Are you feeling okay? Walker stood up and stepped out of the cubicle. She felt lightness. She felt in control. Like the world was simply an image in her Photoshop program, ready to use and royalty free. Why do you do that? She said, pointing to Louise's face. Why do I do what? Do you make your skin smooth? Girl, I just have to get rid of a few spots here and there. You know how it is. <laughs> she laughed at Walker like she was talking to a child. But Walker didn't mind. She was too busy looking at Louise's face, checking for the spots and zits that Louise was so concerned with. Spot healing brush tool. That's what she'd use if this were a picture. Command J. That would remove the blemishes and smooth those imperfections right over. Are you sure you're okay? Louise said. You seem weird. If you want, I can get you a glass. The words stopped coming as soon as Walker pressed click in her mind. The fizzing in her brain shimmered with pleasure as all those nasty imperfections in Louise's face were gone. All those bumps and grooves, the ones that made up her eyes, nose, and mouth, all smoothed over and made perfect. Louise slumped to the floor, screaming and suffocating somewhere beneath the featureless face as Walker stepped over her jerking body. Walker walked through the campus, seeing most of the classrooms now empty. Through the windows, she saw it was dark outside. Most of the classes would have ended now. That was ideal. Perfect. She found her way back to the computer labs and found only one Mac still on at the far corner of the class by the whiteboard. Walker, Mr. Dagg said as he stood up. I didn't realize you were still here. Look, I'm glad you are. I've been meaning to talk to you. Walker stepped towards him, feeling her mind fizz, becoming excited. You might want to take a seat because I haven't got good news for you. Mr. Dagg, that was his name, but he was so obsessed with people calling him Dave. Why? What made him want to be called Dave so badly? It's about these end-of-year designs you've submitted. I mean, they're all wrong. You really foo-fooed the bed on this one. Walker, are you listening? Dave, you want it so bad? Well, here you go. The text tool. But what font? He'd probably like something basic. How about Comic Sans? And with that, she clicked in her mind. Walker, are you still fit? Ow! What the? He pressed his fingers to his face, felt the text emblazoned above his eyebrows. It was squared and cropped neatly on his forehead. Did you, did you do something to me? He said, stepping back and crashing into the whiteboard. Now then, Walker thought, what about those weirdly long fingers? Let's crop those out. With 10 little clicks in her mind, Dave screamed and fell to the floor, looking upon his half fingers with confusion and terror. You're too abstract, Walker said out loud. You don't like that. You like things simple, right? Clean, neat design. So let's get to work, shall we? Using all those tools in her spell book, all the shortcuts in her book of alchemy, Walker clicked, clicked, and clicked. She cropped out the limbs, burned and dodged the complexion, used the pen tool to lasso that distended belly of his, and free transformed inwards. The same with all those curves and joints that littered his form. Please! Dave squealed with what little of a mouth he had left. Jesus Christ, please don't! That's enough of that, Walker thought as she used her handy spot healing brush tool to smooth over his mouth. It was a long process, and before she knew it, the sun was rising and lighting up the classroom. It wouldn't be long before the first of the morning's classes started to arrive. But it didn't matter. Walker was done now. She'd submitted her work and was sure it was exactly as the teacher wanted. It deserved an A and nothing less. Completely perfect and simple, a pink cube. Clean lines, without imperfection. 
and with that faithful Comic Sans font at the top. It had that lovely calling card motto, Call me Dave, it said. Call me Dave. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Other Stories. Photoshop Wizard was written by Luke Condor, narrated by Shara Yonke, edited by Carl Hughes of music by JCM Canada and Tom Robson. The sound effect provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and again to Joshua Boucher and to Carolyn O'Brien for helping with the mission reading, and to Ben Errington for wrestling social media alligators down in a content swamplands. Luke Condor, me, makes stuff, and you can find more of my stuff at lukecondor.com. You can buy my latest book, My Dog Shits Cash, and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at, at Luke of Condor. Shara Yanka is a quirky, enigmatic Lalakisiak who lives in beautiful Eugene, Oregon. When she's not fashioning medical products to rescue your squishy brains, she's using her own to plot new story ideas, own her archery skills, play video games, and occasionally lose herself in paralytic fits of existential dread. Don't we all? She's accompanied by her danger noodle, Silas, who whispers award-winning story ideas in her ear every night and graciously allows her to keep all the credit. You can find Shara on Instagram at at Zalazra and on Facebook at Shara Dene Yonka. The Other Stories is a production of the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver and it's brought to you with Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means share the hell out of it. Until next time.